welcome to another episode of the Heavy Metal Gamer Show, and what the hell is that? Is that Nikki Six or Mick Mars? It's not Tommy Lee, and it sure as hell isn't Vince Neil, but damn, that's scary. Holy shit. This week's review will be Crewball on the Sega Genesis, which is a game I have only played a few times before, and it's been a really long time since I've played it. So I thought, what the hell, why not just review it? Crewball on the Sega Genesis was developed by New FX and published by Electronic Arts. It was released on the Sega Genesis in 1992, and it was only released on the Sega Genesis. Nothing else, not even a Super Nintendo release. Crewball is your typical pinball video game, but instead of being one table, it is actually three screens high. So there are three tables pretty much split into sections. The goal of each table is to knock out certain areas or targets in the lower screens in order to gain access to the top screen. Crewball is a video game based around the hair glam metal band Motley Crue, which if you've never heard of Motley Crue you must have been living under Honey Boo Boo's mother's ass, or you find rock and metal to be the devil's music. Ooh, they're not metal, they are butt rock. Hair and glam metal are not real metal. <laughs> I can see that coming from 50 miles away. Yeah, I got the power to see stuff before it hits. I think everybody does. First of all, yes, Motley Crue is metal. They are hair metal, or what some like to call glam metal. And it is part of the metal genre. It is a subgenre. But this video is not about metal genres. It's about a video game that features Motley Crue, so let's keep it at that. Now, Crew Ball was originally going to be called Twisted Flipper, but the producer of the game wanted to change the name to Headbangers Ball and have it based off the MTV show, but MTV was not interested, so they decided to slap Motley Crue's name on it late into development. You know, back then, MTV was actually pretty cool. Of course, I was real young, but if you talk to a lot of people that are older than me, they had a lot of cool stuff on MTV. They had Headbangers Ball, where they would show videos and interviews and have real metal musicians on there, which the later Headbangers Ball featured a lot of metalcore and hardcore and all them type of bands. It was very seldom you saw an actual metal band on there. There are nine levels in Crew Ball, but to get through them I feel that the game can be very time consuming. But then again, what pinball themed video game isn't? I mean, every one of them that I've played, it takes a little bit to get to the next level, especially if you don't play a lot of these games. There is also a bonus mini game, and what is funny, the game is where you play Pong against exploding skeletons. So technically, this game has two styles of video games in one, pinball and Pong. Now as you can see, the theme of the game has a lot of demons, skulls, something that looks like a zombie head, and more, which I think is pretty badass. I always like seeing pinball games like this. Hell, I like pinball machines that have a dark theme to them, and especially if they have awesome sound effects, table effects, and so on. The graphics for Crew Ball are pretty damn good. They are colorful, but also very dark, and it fits the theme perfectly. Although the guy that pops up at the title screen, I'm gonna say this again, he's a creepy looking bastard. It has to be Nikki Six after a drug binge. Of course, the band is doing pretty well nowadays and keeping themselves somewhat clean, but back in 1992 and earlier, they were partying it up with booze, drugs, women, and more. One cool feature in Crew Ball, it's a four player game. That's right, multiplayer. Yeah, those modern gamers might like that. Oh wait, it's not online. The multiplayer is set up where players take turns, which is cool because you can play with friends and see who can get a higher score. Hell, I'm sure this could be a lot of fun. Play this at a party or with a bunch of friends hanging out, especially if everyone is into gaming. See who gets the higher score, maybe put a little bit of money down, like 10, 15 bucks, and boom, profit. The music and sound effects are pretty good. It has that signature Sega slash electronic arts sound. It's almost very metallic. If you look at a lot of electronic arts games on the Sega Genesis, it's kind of hard to explain that metallic sound, but once you hear it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are three Motley Crue songs on this game, and they are Livewire, Dr. Feelgood, and Home Sweet Home, which I think are great Motley Crue songs, although I would like to hear songs like Bastard, Shout at the Devil, Looks That Kill, and so on. Plus, it would have been really nice to have a few extra songs in this game. The sound effects are good as well. Fits the game perfectly. I have no complaints at all. You know, this game reminds me a lot of pinball video games such as Alien Crush and Devil's Crush, especially with the graphics and the theme of the game as well. Funny thing though, Devil's Crush is also on the Sega Genesis, but I will talk more about that when I review Devil's Crush later on. The controls are quite good and responsive, which I am a bit impressed with. Usually pinball games on consoles are a little slow at responding, just a little bit. Not all of them, but some of them that I have played. I am glad they are responsive and I actually enjoy the layout of the controls as well, so I have no complaints. 
Crewball is a fun pinball themed video game. Not only that, I am also a fan of Motley Crue, especially their earlier stuff. The game is not something you can sit and play for hours unless you are big into pinball machines or pinball themed video games. For those of you that are not big into them, this might be a cheap thrill, something to play here and there. I personally can sit and play this game for hours, but then again, I enjoy pinball machines and pinball themed video games, especially if they're really good. There is no sequel to Crewball, which kind of sucks because another pinball game based on a heavy metal band would have been really cool. Maybe something more along the lines of a death metal band like Cannibal Corpse or Death or even black metal. I mean, it would be really cool to see a pinball game based off Immortal. Or if you want to go old school black metal, Merciful Fate. Now, if there was a game like that, I would buy it in an instant and probably play it for hours because I am a big Merciful Fate and King Diamond fan. Sadly, Crewball is not on the Virtual Console, PlayStation Network, or Xbox Live Arcade. I personally think it should be, and to be honest, I think this game flew under the radar with a lot of gamers. If you want to play Crewball, you could probably find this game on eBay or at a locally owned game store. If you try GameStop, they would probably think it's a Call of Duty minigame you can download as DLC. Looking at RarityGuy.com, which I think is a great site, and thanks to Billy and Jay from the Game Chasers for telling everyone about the site, I think in one of their past videos or on one of their live streams, Crewball is 30% rare, so you can most likely find this game, and on eBay it's going anywhere from $6 to $35, and that would be either a loose cart or in a box. Of course the game in box would be a lot more than the loose cart, but I'm sure you know that already. I say pick this game up if you are big into pinball themed video games or pinball in general. Not only that, if you are a Motley Crue fan, you can pick this up as a collector's item. Hell, it'd be funny to see somebody buy this game, take it to a meet and greet of the band, and have them sign it. Then again, I'm sure they'll probably look at it and go, I don't remember doing this. Of course, back then they were drinking and drugging, so of course they wouldn't. Well, that is it for this review of Crewball. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.